Today I want to talk to you for the next little bit of time uh, on the subject of the battle is real. We talked about this last week some. We began to unpack this. Tonight as we go into worship, and I know uh, Jake made mention about coming out and how you know some of you can pack so many people in your vehicle. Um, I, I just want to, to encourage you from a pastor's heart. I know it's Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon. We're going to start at 6 o'clock, right? Six o'clock, we're gonna we're gonna start, and by seven, unless the Lord just you know comes in and takes over, which if you know us, we just allow the Lord. You know, we're here for for the Lord. That that if we pray and we say, Father, meet us, then why should we rush if He's trying to meet us? Amen. So uh, this evening at six o'clock, we're gonna have a great time of worship. We're gonna be doing spiritual warfare and worship. Amen. And so if you come in here tonight and you go, man, I need healing or I need just a touch of God. These altars are always open. You see people coming down, uh, being able to minister. But I'm just going to ask you as, as your pastor and as a friend, could you please make tonight a priority? Could you make tonight a priority? You know, it's we don't do Sunday evenings because we, we give them to you to say, hey, you know, just go and enjoy your family. Uh, if you if you feel like Sunday evening you need uh, a church service, there are so many great churches, great sister churches that are having those, and we bless you to be a part of those. Our schedule, we have three services a week. We have Sunday morning, we have Wednesday evening, and we have Friday night. We have three services that go on during the week. And uh, so we encourage you tonight, please make a priority. Uh, to come out and worship with us. Just come out. Uh, you can come in shorts. You can come in your invisible socks. Uh, you know, you can, How we just want you to come and be a part of this. You go, well, I'm not sure what to expect. Well, what you saw up here just magnified. And we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a great time. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to go back and I want to I wanna go back and review uh, the beginning of last week's message because before we can understand spiritual warfare we've got to understand who and what we're battling against so I just want to pray over you today and as we get ready to go into this and as I'm praying over you I ask you to send prayers back to me that God would give me clarity that God would give me insight um, and just help my mind stay stay focused I do I'm a uh, I have a little bit of ADD I get out there things have to be just just right every every time in my head so uh, if you can help me out in just praying for me today as I pray for you then we're gonna we're gonna have a great day amen father I thank you today for this great group of people I thank you Lord that you are a God who loves us so much and Lord, as we've come into 21 days of prayer, it's like I've told some, when you shake heaven, you also shake hell. And I've, I've talked to a lot of people who hell's been shaken. And they've been going through great battles. They've been going through great, great challenges. And Lord, I thank you for those. That sounds strange to thank you for those, but it lets us know we're on the right track. And so today, as, as I unpack this part of the spiritual warfare, and I give us tools to help in this and things we need to realize. Lord, I pray that you would give me clarity of mind. Father, that I would be focused on you. That my mind would stay on track with the Holy Spirit. And Father God, I thank you for what you're going to do at the end of this day. We receive, we receive the fullness of this day. Not just what's about to happen in the next 35 minutes, but what is going to happen this entire day give you praise in Christ's name and everyone said amen so when we talk about Satan and we talk about warfare a lot of times we we take this and we go well I don't know if I believe in a devil I don't know if I believe in Satan I don't know if I believe in these principalities I don't know if I believe in all of this stuff well it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not it's there amen you, you, can, you can take it and go, well, I don't know if I believe in that. But the reality is that Scripture tells us it is real. 
It is something that we fight against every day. In Ezekiel, we talk about in Ezekiel and in Isaiah 14, we hear about this battle that is going on. We hear in Ezekiel 28, it begins with a pronouncement, as we said last week, upon the judgment of the prince of Tyre, who turns out to be a reference to Lucifer or Satan, who is behind the human king. Uh, Guys, if you could give me a little bit more here, I'm in a hollow. And it's my mind that I have to do, okay? Ezekiel 28, 14 through 15. It says, you were the anointed cherub who covers. And I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. And you walked in the midst of the stones of fire. This is talking about Satan. He said, you were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness was found in you. Now, he's talking about Satan here in heaven until unrighteousness was found in you. Think about that. In heaven, Satan, one of the created angelic beings, allowed unrighteousness, which we know was pride, to come in and to captivate his mind. Even though he was created beautiful and good, the top angel fell into sin. And there are theologians and scriptures that back this up that there was, we believe, a third of the angels of heaven fell with him. It shows us how the enemy can manipulate the mind. How he can manipulate the mind to make you think what is evil is good. What is evil is good. In Isaiah 14, 13 through 14, he, it says, and he's talking about Satan, it says, But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I, notice what he's saying again, I will raise my throne above the stars, and I will sit on the mount of the assemblies in the recesses of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, and I will make myself like the most high. This is happening in heaven. And the Lord's response to this declaration was this, He says, nevertheless, talking to Satan, you will be thrust down to shield the recesses of the pit. You see, we battle against this individual called Satan. We battle against the demonic forces of hell. We battle against these. When he talks about the prince of Tyre, and we hear in other passages, like in in Daniel, when when he said, and I mentioned this last week, when he said, When Daniel began to pray, and the angel came, and he goes, Daniel, I heard you. We heard you from the moment you began to pray. And I was coming with the answer, but I ran into the prince of Persia, which is a demonic influence, a regional spirit that was over that area. He said, I ran into him, and he said, one of the chief angels, Michael, came to assist me and is doing battle with him. And he said, I'm bringing you the answer, and then I'm going back. And we're going to do battle. You see, we understood last week that there were three layers of heaven. The heaven that we see, the stars, the clouds, the beauty that is out there. Then there is the battle called the heavenlies, which is in between what we see and the heavens that we know where our Father rules and reigns. There is a place in between there called the heavenlies where there is spiritual warfare going on. When Satan was thrust down, he came down and he began to take dominion over this area, over over the earth. We do battle against him because we know that one day Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is going to come back and we as the believers in Christ will cast the devil out. The Bible talks about that he will be placed in the bottomless pit. He will be chained there. And can I tell you, there is a time coming where we won't have to worry about identifying this battle. Amen? But you've got to make it through this season that we're in. In Ephesians chapter number 6, which is our key text for this time, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you can be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Then he's saying we battle against this. This is who they are. This is how we identify them. So what do we do? 
He says, so take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. How many of you believe that we are in the evil day? Amen. And having done all, he said, then when you've done everything you know to do, he said, stand firm. He said, stand therefore. And he's telling us how you can stand firm now. He said, stand firm. He said, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as for your feet, having put on the readiness of the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. I want to take a side note here. For those who do not believe that there is a prayer language within the Holy Spirit, praying in the Spirit, then what are you going to do with that part of this verse? Praying in the Spirit. I believe. I pray in the Spirit. I pray in a heavenly prayer language. And you, it's another topic that I'll go into. But a lot of times we dismiss what we don't understand and then we don't use it. So let me, let me help you with that. Those who do not understand how an air conditioner works, all of the, from the thermostat to the time it comes out, go and shut your air conditioner off. Well, Pastor, I've got to understand it. Well, if you don't understand what happens, then you need, you need to live all the way. Go ahead and live it all then. If you don't understand how your car runs, then walk home. I'm going, to take, I'm going to take a spiritual principle and I'm going to put a practical understanding to it. Amen? A lot of times we go, well, I don't understand that. Well, then you might as well, we might as well turn these lights off. I might as well shut my microphone off. We might as well do all of this because there are practical principles to everything. But when it comes to spiritual warfare and because we don't understand that and because we don't understand, well, that sounds weird to me praying in the spirit. Well, it sounds weird to me. How can you turn a thermostat and get cold air or hot air out? But it happens. I'm not going to dismiss it. I'm going to go, I believe. Come on, somebody. And we thank God that we got our other air conditioning unit in. It got online Friday. Come on, somebody. Someone goes, well, I'm still a little warm. We'll bring you a fan. You'll be all right. Pray in the Spirit at all times with prayer and supplication. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. As I was talking to you this morning, and I began to... to Think about this passage as I was writing more and researching over the past couple of weeks. And I'm looking at the, the, war, the big warfare. This morning as I'm getting ready and I'm praying, the Holy Spirit, as I said a little while ago, dropped into my spirit. And he said, LaVon, before you know how to win battles on the big front, you've got to learn how to win battles on the little front. You've got to learn how to bring your flesh under subjection. You've got to learn how to say at 6 o'clock tonight, I'm going to get up and get in my car and I'm going to come and worship God instead of taking a long nap and doing... Oh, am I, that's right, I'm talking about tonight. I'm sorry. It's the battle of the little things. It's the battle of overcoming. Because what did we say last week? We said the battle, first of all, is with me. It's who's in control. Who's going to... I can always find something else to do. I was counseling with a minister this past week as I'm mentoring him in some different things. And he was talking about some things and he was scattered all over. I said, hey, buddy, listen to me. There's good in just about, there's good in a lot of things. But you have to say no to the good and yes to the best. What is best for you? You see, we've got a warfare that over the little things in life, our, our preferences, what we, what we allow to come into our lives... 
the passage came to me this morning, and I came in and wrote it in my notes real quick. In Jeremiah 12 and 5, he says, If you've raced with men on foot, and they've worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in a safe country, how are you going to manage the thickets of the Jordan? He's saying, here, if, if you can't take care of winning the battles in the little things, then how do you expect to win them in the big things? It's about prayer. It's about the Word of God. It's about getting back to the basics of our life. It's about coming in and allowing the Word of God to challenge us instead of just saying, well, I went to church and everything is okay. No, we have got to allow once again the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to come in and convict us of the things that are wrong and then respond to Him with saying, Father, forgive me, I have sinned. And allow him to heal us of these things. You see, you've been given the weapons to fight with. The problem is, many of us are not using the weapons. We're still chained to our past. We're still chained to those things. This week in prayer, man, I was was focusing in on some certain things. I was focusing in on where the enemy was trying to attack. And I'm like, God, show me if there's something in me that is stopping me from getting victory in this area. Lord, show me if I'm not praying the right way in this area that I'm praying for my own good. It's what James talks about that we pray amiss. He says, you don't get what you're praying for because you're praying amiss. He means you're you're just all over the place. I believe that we need to learn to target our prayers, to put names to those prayers, to call out those things that we need. And that's what I was doing. But so many times we are attached and we are bound because of things that have been said about us in our past. Let me tell you something. No one has more authority over you than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The only authority that is over him is the authority that you give to something. I'm going to say that again. Well, I'm just an angry person. Well, then you're giving authority to anger. Well, I'm just this way. You're giving authority to that. Well, it's just always been like this. You're giving authority to that. Stop. 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 And allow the Holy Spirit to come in. And when you feel it start coming in, you stop and you go, Holy Spirit, how do I need to handle this right now? Well, Pastor, people are going to think I'm weird. They already do. (laughs) People look at me and go, that's a weird guy. Mm, I I didn't need any reinforcement from over here. But as long as I'm weird for God, call me weird. Because I am unapologetically in love with Jesus Christ. And and can I tell you something else? In a little bit, in a little bit, I'm going to confront something that I felt the Holy Spirit give me the go ahead on that's going to challenge us and it's going to get real quiet in the room. Because if we don't start identifying where the enemy's coming in at, we are going to stay right where we are. And I am tired of the enemy winning over in our kids, in our married couples, in our churches. I'm tired of it. So we confront the enemy with revelation. Amen? I'm so glad y'all are happy about it. You see, you've got to use the weapon that's been given you. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 5, he says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient, to make it. Somebody say, make it. That means to force it to become obedient to Christ. What are arguments? It is the lies. What is pretensions? Pretensions is where the enemy is pretending to be something that he isn't. The enemy doesn't want you to access the knowledge of God that, he, that God has about him. He doesn't, the enemy doesn't want you to understand who he is. He doesn't want you to understand the tactics that are coming in. He doesn't want you. 
What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a prisoner that is locked by deception, living a life of something that is not true. A stronghold is also anything that exalts itself in our minds, pretending to be bigger or more powerful than God. I'm telling you, there is nothing that my God can't conquer. You see, God wants you to live above the lies that the enemy has sold you. He wants you to live above. The devil is a liar, and he constantly feeds you those lies. He tells our young people, he tells our adults, you know what? You've got to do this to fit in. You've got to be like this to be able to make it somewhere. You've got to be this. Listen, the only thing that you've got to do is be a person that submits to the will and the plan of God for your life because the Bible tells me your gifting will make a place for you. Your gift will make room for you. You see, in John 8, 44, it says, when he lies, the devil, it says he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. That is his native language. Listen, spiritual warfare is about exposing the lie and replacing it with the truth. That's what we're doing today. We're exposing the lie and we're replacing it with the truth. So what do strongholds do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's a couple of things that you can jot down. If you don't get them all, let me know and I'll send you my notes. It says, what do strongholds do? Strongholds steal our focus. Steal our focus. Strongholds cause us to feel controlled. But I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why this keeps happening. This is what, this is a lot of times what you need to understand is, is this is, this may be what you did but it's not who you are. Yes, I I did this, but it's not who I am. I am a child. Yes, I made mistakes in the past, but I am not defined by my past. I am defined by who I am. I am a child of God. I am a blood-bought Christian. I am an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Am I going to make mistakes? Absolutely. But it's what you do with those mistakes and how they define you from there on out that really matters. You see, they consume emotional energy. The enemy, when he comes in against you, these strongholds, they consume emotional energy. We become weary in well-doing. We become weary in it because that's what the enemy wants us to do. When we're walking in our calling, when we're walking in our gifting, it doesn't mean that you're totally energized all the time. There are times when you become weary. Why? Because the devil wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you to give up. That is why it feels so draining doing what is good because you're fighting against the principalities, the powers, the powers of darkness, the rulers of wickedness in high places. You feel drained. That's why we have to go back and do as David did. When when the, the people around him were coming against him, the Bible said David called for the ephod, which was symbolic of the presence of God. We could call it worship music. We could call it the word. I have a prayer shawl. And I, there are times when I'll unpack that prayer shawl and I'll just cover myself. And you'll go, well, pastor, is there prayer? Is there power in that prayer shawl? Where did you get it? It's made of material. You can do it with a blanket. It's just something I got when I was over in Israel that was a gift. And I'll, I'll take it at times and I'll kneel down and I'll cover myself symbolic of I'm getting alone with you, God. I'm, I'm pushing everything else out. And I'll get in and I will encourage myself sometimes I got to talk to myself come on get over it get over yourself I got to talk to myself and I got to pull myself out of it you see the enemy these strongholds can distract you from your purpose and they rob us of what God intended our life to be so I'm going to talk to you real quick about three realities that you need to believe Three realities. Number one, you need to believe the devil is real. You go, well, that's a no-brainer. Well, then why is it that in a a recent survey, 60% of Christians, Christians do not believe the devil is a real force to be reckoned with? Why? Because we've diminished this teaching within the church. We don't talk about this because it ain't a feel-good thing. 
Well, I'm trying to make you feel better because if you learn how to deal with the devil, you'll be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ and you'll have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Amen? 2 Corinthians 11 and 14 says, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. That's why you've got to be aware of what's going on. You see, in the heavenlies, there was only three angels that are mentioned in Scripture. One of them was Gabriel. Gabriel was used in Scripture to send a message or to send the word. Then there was Michael. Michael was about prayer and warfare. Then there was Lucifer, and Lucifer was about worship. Why is the war of worship so big in churches? Whether we sing out of the hymnal, whether the hymnal is red, green, or blue. Depends on what denomination you are. I remember whenever it was a battle because we were using overhead projectors. How many of you know what an overhead projector is? That's right. And you would slide your fingers up there and sometimes you would see people's fingers you know, on it because you put the words on the screen. I remember when that divided churches. You know what they called it? They called it singing off the wall. No, singing off the wall. I remember those times. Well, you've got to get back to where the Lord was in the Redback Hymnal. I, I love the old songs. I cut my teeth on them. Tell me a page number and I'll sing the song. I grew up on them. There is foundation in them. I still love them. I love the stories that are behind them. But let me tell you something, folks. The Lord is not married to a color of a hymn book. The Lord's married to what's coming out of our heart as we sing it to Him. Amen? You see, in Revelation, that's why Lucifer is known about worship. He led worship in heaven and he was cast down. I love what Martin Luther said. He says, when Satan fell from heaven, he landed in the choir loft of the church. Why? Because there's such a battle. Tonight, we're going to do battle against that. How many of you are coming tonight? You coming tonight? Good. Revelation 12, 7 through 9, and there was a war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, which is Satan. And the dragon and his angels, which are the ones that fell with him, fought back. Oh, but I love this. But he was not strong enough. And he lost his place in heaven. The, dra- the great dragon was hurled down. The ancient serpent, where did we find him identified in the garden as a serpent? The ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to earth and his angels with him. You see, the devil's goal is to destroy us. John 10 and 10 says the thief comes to steal Kill and destroy. The devil, the realities of of the enemy, the devil responds though to a higher power. The devil has some power, but he answers to the higher power. John 4 and 4 says, the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So I want to give you three weapons that are at your disposal to fight against the enemy. Number one, the name of Jesus. Luke 10, 17 through 19. And the 72 returned with great joy. These are 72 besides the disciples that were already called. The work was expounding in such great magnitude that there were others that were sent out. And there were 72 more. And they came back and the 72 returned with great joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And he said, Jesus is in essence is going, well, no, duh. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've been there. He said, and now you need to understand that I'm giving you authority. Come on, somebody say, I have authority. I I have given you authority to trample. And these are symbols or words for demonic forces. To trample on snakes, scorpions, and to overcome all the power of the enemy. 
and nothing will harm you. Now, it doesn't mean that you go out and play with snakes and scorpions. I want to help you with that. If you come in with a box or a bag, security is going to stop you at the door. They may tase you. In Jesus' name. Because if anyone comes in, and I hear it going, that's why I don't like tambourines. <laughs> tambourines are of the devil because they sound. I'm leaving. Follow me to the nearest exit. Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, earth, and under. Man, another one is the blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The other thing that is a weapon for you to use is the Word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter number 4 give, an, uh, give us an account of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by the enemy, by the devil. And what did he say? He held him back. It is written. It is written. Everything that we deal with was dealt with by Jesus in the wilderness. And he overcame them all. John 8, 31 through 32, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. You see, in the, bat, in the armor that he was talking about, there is only one thing that was offensive. And that was the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Everything else was defensive. Protecting your mind, protecting your heart, protecting where you go, protect, protecting what you reproduce out of your life. But it was the Word of God, that, sh that sword of the Spirit. So lastly, what are three things that you can do every day? Number one, I commit myself to God. You see... Your authority with the devil is only as strong as your relationship with God. Your authority with the devil is only as strong as your relationship with God. Because if you don't know how to use the word of God and you don't have a relationship with God, then how are you going to call on someone you don't have a relationship with? Your authority with the devil is only as strong as your relationship with with God you see many times we want to use the word of God we want to use the power of God to keep the things off of us and those of you who, who are maybe superstitious about opening an umbrella in church get over it this is how we use God a lot of times we go Lord I want to walk under your protection but what we do is we begin to drift out from under it we wonder, why am I getting a little wet? That's well, because you're not close to the center of where God wants you. You're not, you're not close. And I begin to drift. And next thing you know, I'm getting wet. I got to come back. And I got to get back under the center of God's protection. Moving out from under the umbrella of His protection is crazy. Why would I walk in a rainstorm like this? Well, I have an umbrella. Oh, duh. Why don't you use it? Well, I will. Well, that felt good. I feel better now. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Oh, man. I'm so wet. You see, I've got to constantly walk under his protection. 
and then the power of his might. You see, the more committed you are and the more you stay under the authority of God, the more power you have in spiritual warfare. That's why he said, submit yourself then to God and resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Secondly, close any open doors. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11. If you forgive anyone, I also forgive him. What I have forgiven, if there is was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake in order that Satan may not outwit us. For we are not aware of his scheme, not unaware of his scheme. Ephesians, it's talking about anger. Do not sin. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Close every door. Wednesday night we had a door that opened a little bit. Pastor Jake and I had to come in and deal with it. So great he was doing a message. I love the timing of God. He was doing a message on tough conversations. Is that what it was, Pastor Jake? Friends and family are able to challenge each other. Wednesday night, we walked in, and you need to know this as parents. We walked in, and we knew something was up. And how many of you know that you can smell the smell of vape? Sweet smell? It wasn't the Spirit of God. wasn't the incense coming up from the altar it was students in a bathroom vaping Pastor Jake dealt with it lovingly as a father I walked in as pastor and I told him I said I'm hurt tonight because you broke our trust but parents let me tell you something they're learning a lot of that from us How can we challenge our unit when we are opening doors? It doesn't matter whether you think it's right or not. This is the challenge I'm putting out there. It's about what am I saying is okay to the generation? Amen? Or oh me. And it's okay either way because we love our children enough to confront in love. So this Wednesday night, we'll have an officer that is there. And just to let you know, if you don't want to bring your children, it's okay because this is what's going to happen. We've hired an extra officer for Wednesday night. Now, we used to not do it. But we've hired an officer, and an officer is going to be standing at the front door. They're going to have a wand because it'll pick up. And they're going to ask before you walk in, is there anything you need to declare or go put back in your vehicle? Because we love them enough that we want to close the door. We love them enough that we want to help close the door. Because can I tell you something? The enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. When I hear in our high schools and in our elementary schools how much of this they even showed me the other day where a highlighter has been disguised so that you can vape from that it's not about whether you can do it it's about what you are opening the door to and I say it in love I thought about going off camera and saying this but I'm saying it this is who evangel is we love our kids enough that we're going to confront and parents and adults they learn it from us. May the Holy Spirit lay conviction where is needed. I love you enough. Have I got any school people in here that would say an amen to what I'm saying right now? I've got counselors in here. I've got, got principals in here. I've got all of this that's going on. Parents, this is about spiritual and it's for the life of our kids. I challenge you, go and find out. You're like, well, you can't go into my room. Uh, excuse me. I pay the bill. Teens ain't going to like me right now, but I love you enough to do this. 
Like you can't look in my vehicle who pays the payment on it. That's fine. You can keep the vehicle. I'm taking the tires. Sure, you can have it. I'll keep the tires. Well, this is my room. I love what a parent did one time. A student was back talking and everything. They said, that's right. That's your room. That's the place we've given you to sleep at. I didn't tell you I had to give you any amenities to sleep with. Took the door. <laughs> took the bed. Took the pillows. I love you enough that I'll give you a blanket. Look, it may scar them. What's happening now? Amen? Close the door. Close the door for yourself. Close the door for others. And then confront the enemy with prayer. Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That's why we need small groups so that we can mesh together as never before. Lastly, my last passage. Romans 8, 37 through 39. No. In all of the things that I've just talked about, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And I am convinced... Guys, if you'll come on, neither height nor death, neither angels or demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth or anything else in all creation. What does it say? Come on. Can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing is greater than the great I am in your life. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Come on. Let's love him together. Let's give him praise. Come on. Stand all over the building and let's give him praise. Let's go, guys. Let's do something and sing out of this place and love God right now. Come on.
to just take a moment and pray for our kids. Pastor, address something that we had to address heavy heartedly. Way home, driving home. I live in Grand Ridge. I'm about 16 minutes to myself. I usually don't drive home with the radio on, turning into pastor. It's crazy. I'm scared. But my heart broke. ministry. I've told you before, I do surveys. I, I want to know what they're dealing with. I want to know what they're going through. And I came to a conclusion that the, the enemy isn't shy about his schemes anymore. So would it, we shouldn't be shy about our authority that we could take in Christ Jesus. He's not in hiding. He's no longer just moving in the shadows. We as parents, leaders, mentors can set the example with spiritual authority. And what a timely word. Would you join me in prayer just for this next generation? Father, we come to you. our kids those that are here and those who have not yet come God we know that the enemy is out to kill, steal and destroy them but God thank you for the reminder that nothing nothing is more powerful than you, your word, your name your blood God, help us to take spiritual authority in our homes first. Help us take authority. God, help us with conversations with our students. Help us have an attitude of consistent prayer over them. Constant conversation about where they are and what they're going through. God, break our heart. What breaks yours? Father, I bind the attack of the enemy over this generation in Jesus' name. Over their hearts, over their minds, over their eyes, over their lungs, over their bodies. We submit it to the will of God. You have such a great plan for this generation. God, I see moments of revival breaking out in this generation. Help us. As parents and leaders and mentors, help us support them in prayer. Help us have those hard conversations. Help us take part in raising up a generation that sees a great move of God. Not just in our communities not just in our cities, not just in our schools. God, but heal our land. Heal our land. We love you and we give you praise this morning. And everybody said, amen.